Well, first we want to tell you about our tools loan, which you have announced. Yes, I remember um, that. I did that in Parliament. Right, a hundred million is already in the hands of the bank for the person. So actually, you're not going to ask me to wear the hat today. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. We want to put it on. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 no, it's it's true, but but don't tell the executive director. All right, all right, no problem. I, I I, all right, thank you, sir. So, but where agriculture is concerned, there's a fantastic program we call the Agribiz program that focuses on loans to agriculture. Now, in light of burial, what we have been doing so far, we have been going down into the, 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 the St. Elizabeth and Clarendon meeting with farmers. Quite frankly, um, even most recently, we have a conversation with one of our financial partners as to what we can now structure to support this, whether it be capitalizing of interest, whether it be um, you know, more extended moratorium periods for these farmers, or even debt consolidation, where we take over existing facilities, give them new funding with better interest rates, and, 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 and a moratorium to kind of ease the burden. Because quite frankly, when we speak to like the Scalian farmers and the pepper farmers down in Hounslow, St. Elizabeth, we are finding that you know, in order to get them back on track, they need like a nine months period yes. to actually get them back on track. So, so what we have been doing now is kind of you know looking at the, 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 the sector and researching to find out how is it that we can best able to support. The, the average Jamaican may not immediately appreciate the work of an organization such as the Development Bank of Jamaica. Whenever we talk about banks, somehow there is a sense of inaccessibility, that financial services are inaccessible to the average person. So what we have been doing as a government for the last eight years is to drive the financial services and products down to the, the grassroots to get people to be able to access financing. The difference between someone who has accumulated a lot of wealth and someone who is struggling is the, is the access to finance. And, there's, and there, there are two parts to the access to finance. One is the culture of borrowing uh, because a lot of Jamaicans, including myself, we don't like to borrow. And then secondly, the requirements to access the financial products are sometimes overwhelming so those two things the, the, the cultural apprehension and the, the overwhelming bureaucracy to get it locks out an entire cohort of persons from acquiring wealth we're going to be taking a policy direction towards having the dbj offer more support now, the, the DBJ isn't structured to offer that kind of micro-level support, but certainly the DBJ, in partnership with the approved lenders and the micro-lenders, what, what the DBJ's role is, is to create an ecosystem and to provide the financing. But the DBJ also has a role in reducing the number of steps and the bureaucratic requirements. So from a policy direction, that is an area that I will be focusing on. How can we increase accessibility for grassroots producers, the, the small farmers, the subsistence farmers, utilizing the existing network of approved lenders to get money in their hands, but also to help them to develop a culture around money and around borrowing that when you borrow, if you follow certain procedures, if you establish and structure your business in a particular way, you increase your probability of being able to service your debts.